And because it's a low inventory right now, it's probably 1.5 million, you know, homes uh, shortage in all Canada. Wow. So imagine, you know, uh, the price will go up anyway. Mm. So that one is not an answer to, uh, you know, to fix the uh, house prices. It's just, a, you know, a, a theory um, of some people that I think, in my opinion, they didn't sell a house on their life. They don't understand the process. So basically, if they have 5%, let's say the first time buyers, they have 5% right now, but with changing the law, no, they have to pay another 2.5% to the buyer agent it's in order. Top. So yeah. basically now they cannot buy today. They have to, to, uh, to save another, I don't know, one year, maybe one year and a half, depending on their income. So basically will be a delay in, in the buyers entering mm -hmm. the market. And then this is somehow very dangerous for the sellers. They believe that they save 2.5%, but on the other hand, they lost a lot of buyers, yeah, many buyers. They don't have people and they to don't buy have, their yeah. properties. And, and the, um, the, the whole point was, oh, okay, we, we, we tried to, to uh, make this law happen uh, just to, you know, uh, to uh, be sure that the uh, house prices will go down. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, the, the home prices will not go down because mm -hmm. of that. Because it's about, you know, the whatever it's available on the market. Um, for example, in Canada, you know, it's, there are a lot of, um, um, you know, um, um, immigrants that are coming uh, every year, like uh, sometimes 400,000 per year, maybe half million per year. And some of them, they already have money. Some of them, they have to save money in order to buy a home. But anyway, and because it's a low inventory right now, it's probably 1 million, 1.5 million, you know, homes uh, shortage in all Canada. Wow. So imagine, you know, uh, the price will go up anyway. Mm. So that one is not an answer to, um, you know, to fix the uh, house prices. Uh, it's just, a, you know, a, a theory um, of some people that I think, in my opinion, they didn't sell a house on their life. They don't understand the process. So that 2.5% or 3% to the covering broker was huge because, um, you know, the buyers were pro was protected. And they, they um, you know, can purchase, you know, when, whenever they have 5% as a first time buyer, for example, they can enter the market. Now you have to delay that process. For people now, you know, for people, if they want to buy and sell, let's say they, if they want to sell a house and buy another one. So this rule doesn't, you know, make any sense for them. So it's not no. it, because they have to pay. So they save 2.5 when they sell. But they have, they have to pay, pay 2.5 when they buy. Yeah. So what's the what's the what's the deal here? Exactly. And That's a question. Why? You know, they, <laughs> it's a good question. Those actually. guys they want just to make some money, and they did, yeah. and they did, yeah. and um, and now you know it's uh, as I said, the, the real industry, the real estate industry is, sh is reshaping. Mm -hmm. um, probably in Canada in a, in the next future, mm -hmm. but I don't see it like a um, solution. And a lot of, uh, as I said, a lot of uh, buyer agents, especially in the listing agent, they will disappear. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, so basically they have to find another profession. And so many families, they will, they will be devastated. And then the buyer will be, uh, the, uh, you know, the big losers, as I said. Um, and the sellers, they are some kind of winners, but... In theory. In, in theory, but <laughs> in that in practice, you know, like, uh, you know, it will be very hard to sell a home. Mm -hmm. Because now, you see, before we, off, we were offering 22.5% or 3%, whatever, it was a 2.5 in our area. Um, and, and then we can, you know, we rely on 60,000 professionals mm -hmm. from around GTA to find a buyer for that property. Now, mm -hmm. if you are not offering anything, imagine, you know, the probability uh, a buyer agent to come with someone is m much very low mm. and um, so basically the seller doesn't have too many options now they have to do something so you know if, if you if they uh, don't ban you know put putting to, uh, the cooperating broker commission on the MLS I think you know we'll um, we, we, what we'll see probably which I don't like I, I, I don't like and because for this is I left Romania like 22 years ago <laughs> and will be probably money under the table, mm. you know, um, stuff like that, so, you know, like the seller, um, you know, and the listing agent, they cannot put on the MLS, but on the, at the same time, they have somehow to attract the buyers. And I'm afraid that, um, you know, they will do it in a priv private uh, under the table mm -hmm. deals. 
-hmm. And nobody, nobody will know. Can, can nobody will know. Control. Nobody will tax that one. Yeah. Nobody will tax that yeah. one. So I think, I think is even is even worse for the government mm -hmm. because they cannot tax the you know the the commissions yeah. properly. Now it was very clear who is paying, what is paying, and uh, you know mm -hmm. they have to pay the HST. They have to pay the taxes now. Everything is under the table. Mm -hmm. You don't know exactly what the commission is. And guess what? They have some loopholes. So, for example, okay. um, let's I say um, in, in um, you know, for example, um, you know, we, in Canada, we have exclusive listings that they're not on the MLS. So, you know, if someone wants to sell their home and they want to put just a for sale sign in the front of the property, but not being on, um, you know, on MLS, basically th that guy want to save the cooperating broker commission. So he was paying, let's say, 3% to the listing agent, but not paying the, the you know, cooperating agent. So this is in Canada, it's an exclusive listing. Okay. What they are doing now in the United States, they said yes, in exclusive listings, you can you can advertise that you pay the the buyer agent, but that one doesn't make any sense mm. because now what happened is you know so you cannot put on the MLS, but if you put like a private, okay. you can offer that uh, commission. For me, it doesn't make any sense. It's not fair. It's not fair. So basically, what they want to do pre basically is the, to disintegrate the MLS system and then to to force it to. You know, to have pockets MLS listings, basically not to, to you know to the okay. uh, the entire country, and also they allowed you know um, giving a cooperating broker commission for the agents from the same company. So, for example, okay. we are. Yes, this is this that, is very this is very strange. You know the but, the but ruling. Again, we want to remind people we are talking about U.S. For yeah, now. we are talking about U.S. US now, so but I'm just trying to make and then we will a move parallel the, with the Canada. Yeah, we will move so, then to probably to so, Canada. Yeah, the same so market, basically, yeah. now what they are, what they are allowing based on this settlement uh, is um, that. Uh, you know, uh, the agents for the same company, so let's say the listing corp company, they can advertise a cooperating broker commission just inside of that company for their specific agents, mm. which for me is doesn't make, it's not fair. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you think to that, you know, other agents from other companies. So why should be like that? You know, it's so, like a protectionist for yeah. their own people. So they, they want people to work. I mean, they don't want people from other um, brokerage to work with yeah, other so, brokerage. So I just gi just give an example. So I, right now yeah. I'm with Remax Realtron. Mm -hmm. So um, so we are like maybe over 1,000 agents in this company, amazing company, by the way. And so now we can advertise on inside inside our company, in our intranet, that we offer let's say 2.5 percent to the uh, cooperating broker if he is from Remax Realtron. Mm -hmm. But let's say. A guy from Keller Williams or from Riley Page or from another company, they want to buy our listing. We cannot advertise okay. that we give them 2.5%. So for but me, this is, doesn't make any sense. Do you understand what I'm be, saying? You, you do the chances to actually to sell that house or to have more buyers. Ba yeah, you, basically, you, you, you minimize. You, 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 shrink you yeah, you shrink the, 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 the yes, potential we shrink buyers. The, yes, potential, yes. Yeah, that's and that's the problem. It's so it's a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit scary if you ask me. It's, it's, it's scary, it's you know. Scary. So it, uh, you know, so uh, like and this uh, is final. This is like a no, no. Like they a, have to be approved by the by the judge. It's not yet. So it's okay. not yet signed. Well, Marius, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. How long but, have you been a real estate agent? Since 2005. Yes. And so, oh, 18 years. 18 years. Listen, you work so hard. You're top 100 agent worldwide, which is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank on you so that. much, Scott. And you don't just help people sell or buy homes, you do the whole pack. How, so, how do you know what to do to a house in order to increase its value? Um, I learned from you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, and, so you're a pro then. Should, yeah. <laughs> so I try to, you know, explain people that if they, you know, improve their, you know, like with a new countertop, a new flooring, a new bathroom, a new kitchen, they will, you know, like for each dollar, they will get maybe one, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars more. Yes. So this is very important. It's the return and, on investment. Exactly. You want to take care of your yeah. clients. You're not just here to help them buy or sell a yeah. home. You help them move. You give them renovation tips. Everything. It's one of the 
reasons why you and your family are so successful in this business. Yes, they, basically they give me the, the keys of the house and they live in Caribbean for two weeks and when they come back the house is full for the, the most money. You should have your own yeah. show. No. <laughs> so I am so busy doing that, but I, I love it. But you know, it's um, it's a it's, it's a pleasure to do the best thing for my clients. So. Well, look, you've seen a lot. You've got a lot of experience, especially in the Markham area. Where do you see the future of real estate in Markham? Because of the uh, huge immigration in, in Canada, I think it's a good investment to uh, for investors to invest in real estate. Yes, and especially in Markham because um, you know it's uh, close to Toronto. Uh, close to 404, so the, you know the it's a you know very very close to Toronto, and uh, um, the the value in long term will go up for sure. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's a great investment. Listen, congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much, Scott. You're the best at what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much.